Mr. Speaker, whereas is provided by Section 63 1 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15.0 on the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by an affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or other financial institution for the capital or current expenditure of government. Whereas it is further provided by Section 64 of the Act that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister of Finance considered it necessary to borrow an amount of U.S. dollars, $6,276,000, from the special funds resources of the Caribbean Development Bank, the bank, Special Development Fund to support the youth economy project, the loan. And whereas the loan is repayable in 92 equal or approximately equal and consecutive quarterly installments, and whereas the loan payments commence on the first day of January, the first day of April, the first day of July, and the first day of October of each year, after a grace period of two years, following the date of the loan, or such later date as the bank specifies in writing, and whereas interest is payable at a rate of 0.75% per annum on the amount of the loan disposed and outstanding, be it resolved that the Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow an amount of US dollars, 6276000 from special funds resources of the bank's special development fund to support the youth economy project. <coughs> Be it further resolved that the loan is repayable in 92 equal, approximately equal, and consecutive quarterly installments. B. The loan payments commence on the first day of January, the first day of April, the first day of July, and the first day of October of each year, after a grace period of two years, following the date of the loan or such later date as the bank may specify in writing. In C, interest is payable at a rate of 0.75% per annum on the amount of the loan disbursed and outstanding. Mr. Speaker, in his 2021 manifesto, the St. Lucia Labour Party on page 10 made the following statement. <coughs> Youth economy, an economy for the young. The St. Lucia Labour Party is aware that policy makers, and I quote Mr. Speaker from the manifesto, the St. Lucia Labour Party is aware that policy makers of the past in designing programs for economic growth and development have not given nuanced attention to the needs and special interests of the youth. This party, ex this partly explains the high level of youth unemployment. An SLP government will therefore provide tailored incentives to the youth and allow them to turn hobbies into entrepreneurial activities and skills into business. In keeping with this objective, an SLP government will undertake to do the following. Provide fiscal incentives to young entrepreneurs that are specially targeted and readily accessible. Provide financing to eligible young people to operationalize their business ideas in the form of grants and low interest loans. Provide marketing support for these budding entrepreneurs to market their products and services locally, regionally, and internationally. Encourage programs that support skills training, mentorship, and the development of their emotional intelligence to assist them in becoming successful young entrepreneurs. Ensure that the youth economy is an integral part of the wider economy to ensure the creation of a young indigenous business class that can, en that can enhance local wealth creation. Establish a separate ministry, the Ministry of the Youth Economy, to administer the programs and activities of the youth economy. This ministry will, require, will provide the required training to ensure that the skill sets of young people are, ad are adequate to meet the needs of a global marketplace, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that was 
in July 2021, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as usual, we were ridiculed by the opposition. They had no concern that youth unemployment was sometimes as high as 40%. They, they, that wasn't their concern. Their concern was to ridicule us, as usual, Mr. Speaker, ridicule us, and said to us, what are the youth economy the, the, you're, you're speaking about? I remember reading an article in the voice of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, written by the United Workers' Party, where they ridiculed us, Mr. Speaker. They ridiculed us. They said that was politics. And what you should give young people is find them work in call centers. We have no, we have no issue with that. We have no issue with that, Mr. Speaker. In fact, that is why the Ministry of Investment assisted the call centers in Viewfort, Mr. Speaker. And right now, there is great interest because of the policies, the policies of this government in call centers, Mr. Speaker. It's the same way that employment is going to increase for young people and the people of St. Lucia with the number of hotel projects that, that are coming on stream, Mr. Speaker. Hotel projects, Mr. Speaker, not one hotel project happened under the United Workers' Party. Not one. Not one, Mr. Speaker. And you talk about managing the economy and talk about investment friendly. Not one hotel project came under the United Workers' Party, Mr. Speaker. Not one. So, Mr. Speaker, we said that our young people would get jobs in the hotel projects that we are, that we were developing, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, on March 28th, so a youth economy, it was initiated with a Youth Economy Act, a Youth Economy Agency Act, the year. It was a special parliamentary document, Mr. Speaker, that outlined for the first time targeted interventions for the young people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Targeted interventions through an act of parliament, the Youth Economy Agency Act that are lined in the laws of this country, not in, in the laws of this country, for the first time, targeted economic interventions for the young people of St. Lucia for the youth economy, Mr. Speaker. So my letter received on March 28th, 2023, the government of St. Lucia, through the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, and Youth Economy, requested support to youth-owned enterprises for a transformative one-step solution for grant and loan financing, business development, training, ment training mentorship, coaching, and psycho psychosocial support for the young people of St. Lucia. A one-stop, a one-stop agency for the young people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. In the budget of 20. 223, the government invested $4 million for the young people of St. Lucia. In 20, in this budget, Mr. Speaker, we said to the young people that we are going to expand that investment in their future. That investment in making them sustainable, not talk investment, direct investment, Mr. Speaker, in the youth economy. So we went to the Skyba Development Bank and we asked them for the support, Mr. Speaker. The St. Lucia Youth Economy Project is a response to the increasing youth population and high youth unemployment. It has been well established that an expansion of youth economic participation and empowerment in the medium size and micro, micro industry sector will help maximize the economic potential of the youth population and create a more equitable society, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and again, I want you, Mr. Speaker, and I want the people of St. Lucia listening to me to understand how this government operates, the ideological, the philosophical, and the 
economic underpinnings of this government, Mr. Speaker. First of all, Mr. Speaker, we decided that as a government, we'll have to create an environment where education will have been simpler, easier. We remove facility fees. We realize that we have to make it easier for parents to get into the technological age. We reintroduce the one computer per child per household in this country. We also realize that students, when that there was hardship for students when they are writing their CXC subjects. We removed fees for maths and English, Mr. Speaker. We realize also that, children, that education had to be increased. So we decided that we would go on a program of one university, one university graduate for household, Mr. Speaker. But we also realized that there were people who wanted to go into business, young people, between the age, be, below the age of 35, who wanted to go into business, Mr. Speaker. So we decided to get involved in the youth economy. But we didn't do it alone. We also understood that there were other people who wanted to go into business. So we, we decided that the medium SME, the small and medium enterprises, had to be enhanced with an injection of $10 million, Mr. Speaker, in the, mid, in the small and medium size economy, Mr. Speaker, with an emphasis of women and youth, Mr. Speaker, and this program is developing, this program is growing. Mr. Speaker, the expected outcome of the project is increased economic participation and engagement of the youth population between the ages of 18 and 45 in socially inclusive, gender responsive, and environmental resilient business enterprises contributing to the expansion of the SME sector and St. Lucia's overall social socio-economic development. Importantly, the project will strengthen social and gender impact assessments, baselines, targeting, and training to inform the operations and policy framework of the Youth Economy Agency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Youth Economy Agency is run by a board of directors, Mr. Speaker. And these board of directors, they handle all the affairs, all the affairs, Mr. Speaker. There is absolutely no partisan political interference in the Youth Economy Agency, Mr. Speaker, or the Youth Economy as a whole, Mr. Speaker. There's absolutely no interference. Because when it comes to employment, sustainability, and job creation, this government sees no colors, Mr. Speaker. Sees no colors, Mr. Speaker. That is for the enhancement of the country. So there's absolutely no interference, Mr. Speaker. And they cannot believe that, because that's not how they operate, Mr. Speaker. Gone are the days when you just start to cry. These days are over. Gone are the days, Mr. Speaker, when non-entities should not be in business. These days are over, Mr. Speaker. The days of the non-entities are over. These days are done. Now is opportunity for all. The project involves, Mr. Speaker, capital financing. This involves the provision of funding to youth enterprise beneficiaries in key economic sectors, including agriculture, agro-processing, agro the blue economy, the green economy, the orange economy, designing, entertainment, modeling, music, sports, literary and performing arts, writing and, direct, and directing, training and technology, Mr. Speaker. Getting young people involved in what they like, Mr. Speaker, so you could go for a loan to, be, to learn to improve, expand your modeling business if you look good enough. You can go to get a loan, Mr. Speaker, to improve your business, to create websites, Mr. Speaker. You can go to the Youth Economy Agency to get a loan to get involved in sports. 
if you have the talent and the ability, you can go to the youth economy, Mr. Speaker, to get a loan, to get involved in music, Mr. Speaker. You can go to the loan economy, in the youth economy, to get a loan in the performing arts, in literature, in the literary arts, Mr. Speaker. And you can also go to get a loan in agriculture and manufacturing, Mr. Speaker. But we are going to the young people and in what they like, what they enjoy. We're not pushing anything down their throats. We are going, once you have the ability, and Mr. Speaker, once you have the discipline. Because this money is not money that, you, that we want to throw away. This is productive money that we want to turn into sustainability. So, Mr. Speaker, we, that is what we are doing in the youth economy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the loans and grants will be issued based on assessment. From, from a politician. Assessment, Mr. Speaker, on the needs of each politician. The project targets 450 male and female young persons with average loans of 15,000 EC each, a maximum loan, maximum loans of $30,000, Mr. Speaker, and grants to 2,000 916 male and female young persons with average grants of EC $3,000, a maximum of $5,000 based on needs assessment. The loan portion will be disbursed at 3%. So the spread, we borrow at 0.75%, we on lend at 3%, Mr. Speaker, a spread of 2.25% because this, the loans are being disbursed from the Solution Development Bank and they have to get a spread for their administrative costs, Mr. Speaker. This loan, Mr. Speaker, will also deal with capacity building. That includes training for 600 male and female young persons in business development, planning and registration, business management, marketing, business mentoring and coaching for 120 male and female young persons, Mr. Speaker. As a condition of the youth enterprise loans, beneficiaries will receive a targeted training and technical support program customized to fit the needs of the individual enterprise or sector represented. So, Mr. Speaker, before you get a loan, whether it be fifteen, twenty, four thousand dollars, you have to get some targeted training in the field, Mr. Speaker, so you can ensure that you are up to standing, Mr. Speaker. In addition, psychosocial support, Mr. Speaker, and I and you note, Mr. Speaker, this morning how we've used the word psychosocial support several times. We use the word psychosocial social support, Mr. Speaker, because we believe it starts in the mind. In your attitude, in your in the way you can resolve your conflicts, and this is why you always say to the young men in, in, in the country, resolve your conflict, your conflicts by communication, risk conflict resolution by talking to each other. That's why we are we are human beings. We can talk to each other, not lie to each other, but talk to them, Mr. Speaker, not misinforming each other, but talking to each other, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in addition, the psychosocial support will be tailored according to the needs of each individual loan and grant recipient. The individual and group training programs will be primarily, primarily implemented by the YE through the engagement of consultants, Mr. Speaker. In addition, existing training programs provided by the, by the JEPSET and Small Business Development Center, Sir Community College, and Monroe College will be utilized by the year in building synergies and meaningful partnerships for the successful outcomes of the benefits of the youth entrepreneurs, Mr. Speaker. So we are going to work with what already exists, Mr. Speaker. 
We're going to work with it so that we can develop suitable training programs, Mr. Speaker. And I want to mention the support of the government of Taiwan, Mr. Speaker, in this regard. The government of Taiwan has been working with the youth economy, Mr. Speaker, in developing these training programs. I want to thank them, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the, of the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the loan will deal with institutional strengthening of the youth economy agency, including the development and strengthening of environmental, social, and gender safeguards, monitor monitoring and evaluation, grievance, redress mechanisms, again, Mr. Speaker, to help solving conflicts, building resilience to climate-related and other shocks, strengthening interagency partnerships and networking of the youth economy agency for technical assistance services and facilitation of board management of staff, Mrs. Mr. Speaker. The facility's main implementation agency will be the Ministry of Finance through the youth economy agency. We'll engage trainers, consultants, and other third party stakeholders to implement the project's training and technical support component, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the CDB Board of Directors, on June the 8th, note the date, remember the date, June the 8th, 2023, approved the loan to the government of St. Lucia for an amount not exceeding $6,276,000 US dollars and a grant of US dollars $466,200 from the CDB SRR on CDB standard terms and conditions and terms and conditions, Mr. Mr. Speaker, as set out in the appraisal report, Mr. Speaker. The total, <coughs> the board also approved a waiver of the CDB's private sector development policy and strategy to permit CDP to finance working capital to the existing enterprises, Mr. Speaker. That is how important the CDB saw the project, Mr. Speaker so we can use it as working capital. The total value of the waiver is estimated at $4.2 million, Mr. Speaker. The project will be implemented over an 18th month period, commencing October 2023 and ending March 2025. The institutional structure and capacity for project implementation has been established for the creation of the year. We found the year, Mr. Speaker. The year CEO will manage the implementation of the project, and Mr. Speaker, there are certain conditions precedent, and the first one is it has obtained prior approval of Parliament for the loan, that's what we're doing there, and the executing agency appoints a chief executive officer pursuant to the provisions of the Act, as amended from time to time, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, that is what we are borrowing the money for, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, the year is already in operation. As we speak, the year is expanding, Mr. Speaker. We are expanding because, as I said before, we need additional support. We need additional staff, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, I want to make a point that may sound a small point, Mr. Speaker. The offices of the year are situated very close to the NHC, very close to the NHC headquarters. On Chaucer Road, Mr. Speaker, important, small but significant. And Mr. Speaker, we are having discussions to upgrade and revitalize the Derek Walcott Center, which is near the offices of the year. We've had discussions with the National Trust, Mr. Speaker. So let's envisage cash. Because you see, Mr. Speaker, this government believes that everyone must rise together. The tide must take everyone together, Mr. Speaker. So you cannot develop one part of the country and forget the rest and say that's where them people stay in. The country must develop together, Mr. Speaker. So let us envisage what we see happening on Chaussee Road in the distance, in the, in the distant future, or in the near future, Mr. Speaker. The offices for young people. The next door, you have the Derek Walcott Center and a whole set of development which should happen here. I understand that the member for Kashi Central, together with National Trust, and together with the community, 
is working on plans, implementation plans for that whole area there, Mr. Speaker. You have the NHC building high up, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, you go into the teachers' credit union, which on 48, I understand is moving, but something else will come. Something else will come, then, Mr. Speaker. And then, Mr. Speaker, we are going to disclose some plans for the capital of Castries. But, <laughs> but that's for another show, Mr. Speaker. That's for another show. That's for another show, Mr. Speaker. So you'll see the complete transformation of that area, but that's for another show. Mr. Speaker, to date, the year has trained 92 young persons in the north and the south of the island in skill of business training with additional session to be held in 2023 to, uh, to attain, to train additional 60 young persons, Mr. Speaker. We've just concluded training of 28 young persons in the art of digital marketing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and what is so encouraging is the number of young people, Mr. Speaker, who come to the agency. Mr. Speaker, the main activity of the year has centered around the provision of grant financing to qualified young persons. The year has received over 1,000 applications for grant financing. <coughs> application, Mr. Speaker. And these applications come from a wide cross-section of the country. Ancillary, 839. Barbono, 83. Canary, 16. Castries, 353. That's Castries North, Castries Central, Castries South, and Castries East. <coughs> Shows L45. Denry, 59. Dairy Show, 9. Gozil, 170. Labri 43, Mabia Valley 24, Miku 55, Monipo 7, Sufra 71, Viewfort 89, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we intend to open an office for the year in Viewfort shortly, Mr. Speaker. 1,060 applicants. Out of those, Mr. Speaker, 200 have already received funding for their respective enterprises and another 100 have been interviewed and once the documents are in order and they've met the due diligence requirements, they will get a grant, Mr. Speaker. That's already is happening without the investment from the CDB. And we've dis disbursed over $1 million in grants to the young people of St. Lucia. Over $1 million in grants since we opened in April 23. In April 2023 to now, Mr. Speaker, we have disbursed over a million dollars in grants to the young people of St. Lucia. Over a million dollars in grants between April and September. And look at how they are distributed. <coughs> Answer in nine, Barbo Node nine. Canary Street, Cash 65, shows Chozel. And then member, Mrs. Mr. Speaker, is as follows his leader, and he's not here for such an important debate, Mr. Speaker. He's not here. <coughs> and when, if, when they free, they go to the tunnel, Mr. Speaker, and say and spread misinformation, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Chozel 12, Denry 16, Rose 25, Labby 6, Mabia, Denry North 2, Miko 16. Mm, absolutely no political political distinction, Mr. Speaker. Chosel 12, Miko 16, Maripo 1, Sufre 19, Vifort 23, Mr. Speaker. A total of 206 loans have been distributed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like the six of us who are in opposition, Mr. Speaker, I want the government to come in public and say what was done for our constituencies. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the areas, the year gave grants, Mr. Speaker, for water tanks, irrigation systems, computers, fertilizer, technical services. And Mr. Speaker, here's what's important. Look at the areas where the grants were, were given. Agriculture, 21 grants. It shows young people, if you give them the tools, if you give them the adequate, the, the environment, they go into agriculture. 21 for agriculture, four agro, agro processing, 14 for arts and crafts, 14 for arts and crafts, the origin industry, beauty, 
and head dress and such a Mr. Speaker. 27, Mr. Speaker. 27. Young people got, got support for them, Mr. Speaker. In, in the digital technology, 10 people. Entertainment, 19 grand again for entertainment. For fashion, 8 grand. 8 grand. 8 grand. Fishing and marine, 2. Food and beverage, 41. Health and wellness, 9. Landscaping, 4. Maintenance, 7. Manufacturing, 3, Mr. Speaker. Tourism, 9. Marketing, 6. Even retail, 8, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, 206 of these grants were given at a total of $1 million, Mr. Speaker. That has been the impact of the Youth Economy Agency from April 2023. April 2023, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, the Youth Economy, is, uh, ex they are expanding the offices, Mr. Speaker, because they found that where they were too, is too small, Oh, it's too small, Mr. Speaker. So they are expanding the office, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that's a promise of this government that will be fulfilled, Mr. Speaker. So while the misinformation, while the hate, the misinformation and the hate and the propaganda is being spread, Mr. Speaker, the people, the government of St. Lucia is working, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, before I end, there's a school of thought that says that this government should not respond to the misinformation and the propaganda of the United Workers Party. There's a school of thought that says so, Mr. Speaker, that don't respond. Stay on your agenda. Don't respond, Mr. Speaker. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We are staying on the agenda, but we're going to respond. Because if Saddam Hussein had responded correctly, they'll have no war in Iraq. Because the war in Iraq was on the premise that there were, were weapons of mass destruction, and there were none. The war in Iraq, that's how it came about. So if this government allows misinformation and lies to go unanswered, constantly and frequently, Mr. Speaker, we may end up paying the consequences of lies, Mr. Speaker. Because you've seen it before. So we cannot, Mr. Speaker. So I want to tell the people who believe that we stay on course. We are staying on course. You heard the Minister of Infrastructure, what we're doing for infrastructure. We're on course. Every ministry is on course. Ministry of Housing, we demolished a building yesterday. You remember the you and cry about this building, how we would have been displacing people, how people would have been, and this and that, the, the problems. <clears throat> but we on course, Mr. Speaker. We on course. The Ministry of Equity, you heard what's happening there. We on course. Home Affairs, we on course. You understand, know Mr. In sports. We, we went on more course. St. So Lucia is doing the best. We won all three levels of cricket competition this year. Under 19, under 15, and the, and the adult and the male bid, we won. St. So Lucia on course. You heard what, what Miss Alfred is doing on course. In Excel Affairs, we on course. We are there negotiating. In tourism, we went on more course, Mr. Speaker. In health, we compete in St. Jude. In health, we get involved with UHC. So we're on course in health too. In education, we're on course in education. But whilst we remain on course, we will not allow lies and misinformation to, to fester. But we are going to stay on course, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I urge members to support the resolution on the youth economy. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.